Commanders, welcome to today's uh, new episode on Commander's Hub, episode 5. Today we'll be talking about D28, a patch that just hit the galaxies, and of course this is the final uh, part of the original series. And in this part we have a lot of really cool changes and updates that we've made, and together we have Designer Dunzel and Designer Data, as per the usual. Welcome guys, thanks for joining us today on uh, our episode. So, refits. <laughs> Let's talk about this amazing addition to the game. It was actually promised in our roadmap update that we did back in October. We actually we called it a personalized starship back then, and we changed the name for obvious reasons. Um, Refits is you were able to unlock a variety of visual cosmetic like skins and compact projectiles for your ships, and some of these refits will grant ship specific buffs that increase your ship's power when unlocked. Yeah, Phil, I'm really excited to talk about ship skins as we call them internally, uh, refits for player facing. We we liked the feature in other games where it lets you like customize your station or customize your ship, uh, and and it's just a great just cosmetic thing that players can grab and 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 update and and personalize their 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 ship with. Right now, there's only you know the the number of options is limited per ship, but we plan on expanding this in the future, uh, so that players can truly just choose from a amongst a variety of things ideally in the fullness of time. And my, my favorite part about it is. Typically in strategy games, the skins give advantages. Uh, in our game, once you unlock the refit, its benefit is provided to you at all times. So you don't have to grab refits that you don't uh, like the look of and put them on your ship, right? So like, in, in I played another game and I needed my cavalry been boosted, so I wanted to grab this skin that boosted cavalry, and I didn't like that skin. I wanted this other skin that had pretty flowers on it, actually, <laughs> but it didn't benefit my cavalry. But in in, in our implementation of the feature, it uh, gives you benefit once you've unlocked it, no matter what. Uh, so just to be to be very clear on that, you can grab a skin, a refit. You can grab a refit, and once you've unlocked it, its benefit applies forever whether you're using it or not, or whether you decide to use a different refit later on. Uh, so I'm really pleased that we were able to do that. Uh, I hope it's a, I think it's just strictly better, so. I would agree on that point. Um, I am totally that kind of player that runs around in pink armor if that gives the, the best buff. Um, yes, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, it feels painful, obviously. Uh, and of course, whenever you talk about uh, any form of customization, you want to make sure that that customization actually is also appreciated and uh, makes you as a player feel good about the, the skin, uh, the refit, um, and the form of customization that you were able to acquire. Um, one interesting aspect here um, that, of course, is different from a lot of the other games. Uh, normally, uh, you approach customization in uh, MMOs from an aspect of how can I change my character and can, how can I combine uh, customization. And an interesting aspect here is purely um, as we are working with a big uh, and very well-known IP, uh, we have to make sure that we are honoring the IP within those ship skins uh, or within the customization options as well. So uh, in terms of Star Trek, that meant that we had to start out with the, how can we make sure that whatever ship skins or whatever customization options we are offering to the players, that players aren't able to combine them together to create something that would, I would say, taint our brand. If you know an internet community, um, it's also an interesting challenge from a design side. So we approach that with uh, dedicated ship skins that our art department is able to create themselves and uh, dedicated projectiles uh, that they're able to uh, create themselves. That's not to say that this is the, the last on uh, any form of customization, but any form of customization we always need to approach from the how can we make sure that the result is still holding star trek in high regard this is a good point and obviously trying to work with star trek one of the questions that i uh, saw the community asking is let's say that i reskinned my my enterprise and my enterprise is about to go into battle but now it looks like x y other ship um is this going to be any issues do you see any issues when it comes to the actual mechanics of the game or is it something that we have already planned for ship skins don't affect the ui um it's actually a really good point that you're bringing up here because uh, one of the aspects we were looking at is what is it that we would be able to do that other players are seeing and uh, one of the areas where that lends itself um, is of course the system view and here there were different ideas that were brought forward that actually we weren't able to uh, to really go forward with because um, they would 
heavily impacts the UI for our players. So the, the amount of information that is currently given on a system view is quite a lot, actually. Um, you understanding the kind of uh, other ship type, you understanding the strength of other ships, uh, and you understanding the relationship of those other ships, be it in an enemy alliance, be it in your own alliance. Um, all of these are more important than you um, having an absolutely beautiful skin, trail, um, glow effect um, or the like. So yes, absolutely, that's a really good point. Whenever we, we bring up these customization options, we need to make sure that uh, we are not sacrificing usability for our players. That's great to hear because I know and also in a few other games where skins in this case have been introduced, they've always still held the similar character in some way. So obviously as, you, as you're talking about visual representation of what you're trying to attack is something that players um, hang on to over time when playing the game and they stop using utilizing their it becomes, it becomes like muscle memory, right? You see something in the game immediately and you react according to how you're seeing it and you don't actually even think about it. So that's good that we've already put that into the, the works when building these skins. Hopefully we can see it uh, in more stuff like bases or stuff like that. I'd love to have a, a pig base at some point. <laughs> that'd be something, that'd be a dream come true. Uh, but thanks for that, guys. Um, now let's move over to the two new officers. So we have uh, Scotty and Chekhov. Essentially, Scotty um, kind of does the same thing as our other Scotty, where uh, increases the warp range on explorers. But of course, we have also Chekhov that's coming into the game and I'm very excited about, which increases the impulse speed on explorers. And of course, um, when attacking a player on a capturing and, or mining node, it decreases the opponent's damage by X percent. Um, one of the cool things and one of the questions that players were asking, especially around Scotty, is do, this, do, do Scotty stack? So you put the old Scotty and the new Scotty, will that stack and increase the impulse speed of, uh, of your, the warp range, sorry, of your ship? Because this will be actually something that will be cool for um, the discovery. Yes, absolutely, Phil. They will stack. Uh, so the warp range benefits, uh, all, all of them are, are added together. And we're very cautious when we add these because they have different effects at different levels. But uh, And it was a little bit tough to balance uh, in this case. But we got something that we were happy with uh, adding as a, as a tool for our players. So freely able to use both of them. Um, you are you're right on the, on the point uh, that this is not easy to balance. Um, it never, never is. Um, if we were to give more officers the ability to expand warp distance on surface level, players would love that, absolutely. But the reality will then be that uh, suddenly our players are able to receive missions that they are not able to complete, which is a frustrating experience. Um, suddenly they are able to get into systems where they get defeated. Um, and suddenly they are going in competition with the players that are far, far stronger than the players that they are able to, to reach right now. So definitely a warp range is uh, something, I would say a, a double-edged sword uh, because it can, be, it can be super interesting if done on a small subset of officers. And at that point it's super powerful as well, but uh, it can be actually a problem to the game experience, the player experience, um, if done too much uh, and if done uh, extensively. So absolutely agree with, with Nandel here. Um, always a little bit of a challenge when it comes to balancing. Thanks, guys. Um, so kind of moving on to obviously we have the new missions and new battle fast. This is the same as uh, you, you've seen in the past, uh, the past parts and, of course, in the previous arcs as well. One thing I want to call out before we move forward is the ticketing advance system. I uh, just wanted to let uh, all the commanders know that uh, all previous uh, tickets that you have acquired in uh, TOS uh, Part 2 will be used in Part 3. And uh, of course, there will be new tickets as well that will be utilized in Part 3 as well. Um, so if any of you have tickets left over from Part 2, don't fret. You'll be still using them in Part 3. And of course, we have the event store, something that always comes at the end of each uh, arc. Of course, the St. Patrick's and April Fool events. So I don't know if uh, you guys want to talk about this. I know it's a, it's going to be a really nice surprise for the players. Obviously, if there's anything that you can leak right now, that would be great. Of course, if there's nothing that you can't, then it's fine. No, Phil, there's absolutely... We, we should never, ever leak things early <laughs> on. Because uh, I, I should not be saying that the April Fool's event is something that we've been planning for a while and have been looking forward to on our roadmap internally. Uh, and that we should not record that and not send that to players. Okay. Awesome. To Perfect. be clear. I yeah. will definitely not put this into, into the podcast. That's definitely not happening. 
I mean happening. I mean not. Yeah, Great. I mean, perfect. That's, thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it's something that I've been looking forward as well. I saw the specs and I'm super excited for it. So hopefully the players will enjoy it too. And they might get a bit yeah. fooled. Yeah. With... There's there's different things that are I've found in, in in designing for Star Trek that are like kind of rote and I feel like oh I gotta do this again. And there's other things where it's like ah I'm really looking forward to doing that. I mean Star Trek um, is. It's a very serious IP, um, and it's actually very heavy in the concepts and the questions that it poses. But then um, it also does a great job at being lighthearted at the moment as well. And um, I think these kind of these kind of events, these kind of these kind of dates, uh, are definitely an opportunity for us to go into the uh, lighthearted spirit of, of Star Trek and introduce something that uh, otherwise wouldn't really fit. Um, so yes, it's always an interesting uh, opportunity for the design team, for our life ops team to get together and uh, come up with something new and exciting. Can't wait to see um, what we have to bring. Obviously, there's a lot of really cool content that's been added uh, on top of um, St. Patrick's and April Fool's Day event. Thanks for thanks for that, guys. And just I wanted to call one last thing out before we close this podcast. And it's, of course, the confirmation for Instant Latinum. I know that for the past few months, the team has been doing a lot of work, adding a lot of uh, cool little quality of life changes into the game. And obviously, this comes directly from our uh, commanders on our channels. And so I wanted to... so. Um, we had a lot of cool quality life changes. Skin, trail, um, glow effect, um, or the like. So yes, absolutely. That's a really good point. Whenever we we bring up these customization options, we need to make sure that uh, we are not sacrificing usability for our players. It's really cool to hear that uh, we were adding the confirmation and just to be um, just to be clear, this is a this confirmation for when using the instant lat button that uh, and when spending more than 100 latinum like for example when you're repairing a ship right but if it's under 100 latinum latinum the confirmation uh, button will not pop yet if it's over 100 latinum you'll have a confirmation button so for those of you that have mistakenly pressed the instant latinum and uh, had to pay that that amount of latinum that you hadn't uh, foresaw will be super happy like me because i have fat fingered it many times <laughs> We all have, I believe, I think, um, and it's a frustrating moment uh, whenever that happens. So yes, absolutely. It was uh, requested by the community a lot uh, and it made total sense. So one of our teams got onto this. I can't tell you how many times I've smashed it when I'm trying to repair in the middle of a fight. It's, it's so frustrating. So <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Month by month, arc by arc, there's just so much more things to do within the game. It has, it's becoming so reactive that even these small quality of life changes will, will will introduce a more smooth experience to to all of us. Yeah, you're raising a great point here, Panic. I think um, as the team has grown, and uh, by now the team around Star Trek is, is a very, very big team, um, especially for a live game, um, we have been constantly balancing the um, development of new features, regular development of new content for our temples, and then, of course, also bug fixing and quality of life improvements. And basically, um, we have been working on like three parallel tracks um, to be able to directly service these three main goals. Uh, one dedicated for features, um, one that is um, making sure that we have uh, constantly uh, updated content, uh, that we have interesting uh, temples and we have an interesting narrative for these as well with all of the uh, events around. And uh, then one that is more looking at what is the game right now, um, what, what kind of bugs uh, do we have and what quality of life improvements can we give to our players. There you have it, Commanders. Um, thanks again for joining us, Dunzel and Data. Uh, it's been another enlightening episode, talking about a lot of the cool things that have been added into um, Patch 28. You can see all the patch notes in the link below uh, on our blog. And of course, if you have any questions or, or you just have anything to talk about, please join us on Discord. And the link is below. Uh, or of course, um, ask us here on the channel. Once again, Commanders, live long and prosper, and then hope you enjoy the new patch.